It's a tardigrade, also known as water bears or moss piglets. They look like little bears with their claws and snout and walk like them too. They're the internet's favorite microbe and for good reason. They have been found all over the world from hot deserts to under layers of solid ice in the Arctic, in forests and even near superheated vents at the bottom of the ocean. They can withstand temperatures in the extreme from 248 degrees Fahrenheit down to negative 457 degrees Fahrenheit and even lethal doses of radiation. They can survive in a vacuum like space, but have to be in their ton state, which is an extreme form of hibernation where they shrivel up like a raisin. Most of this video is based on this book, which is really fantastic, I recommend it, and a very nice man I got in touch with at the University of Amsterdam. The best place to find these cute little guys is anywhere that has moss, hence the name moss piglet. For our hunt, we went into the forest in our backyard. We gathered lots of different kinds of moss and from lots of different locations. One thing to note, make sure to avoid areas that have any kind of pollution, whether it's air, water, or land pollution. And we had a visitor. Tardigrades also love lichen, but whatever you gather, make sure it's the softest you can find. Getting in the deep cracks of tree bark is also helpful. After you gather your samples, give them some water, but make sure there's no additives like the chlorine that's in our tap water. I got these nifty little containers at the Dollar Tree and I love them. Now let your moss and tardigrades rehydrate for 12 to 24 hours. Once rehydrated, you want to extract the water. However, after weeks of not finding any tardigrades, I resorted to several mistakes. The first was using too much water, the next was too much moss. I also left some for too long and it rotted and it killed the tardigrades or they didn't wake up. I later learned this is the proper method, a single layer of moss and only a tiny bit of water. Even this is probably a little much of everything. I grabbed some eyedroppers from Walmart and made some observation dishes. Glass petri dishes are the best choice because of the way water clings to plastic, but some cut up plastic cups can suffice in a pinch. Suck up some water from your already soaked moss. Early on in our hunt, we tried a lighted magnifying glass, but it didn't work because tardigrades are just too small. I was so excited to get an observation microscope because its low magnification would allow me to see things that are too small for the naked eye, but not at such a high magnification that viewing a bunch of moss water samples would take a million years. Plus, I don't have to strain my eyes because it connects to my phone and computer. I used the dials on the microscope to zoom and focus. Oh my goodness, that is so cool. It even takes pictures and video. So here's my compound microscope. There are two different ways to view something under a microscope, and one of them is called dark field. That's what we're gonna do right now, where you put a black piece of paper under your specimen and shine the light from above or to the side. And normally a microscope shows bright view, where the light comes from beneath, and this is the view from bright view. So here I am putting my black piece of paper under my microscope, and I tried this, but it was just too high of a magnification. I had to find my tardigrade first. Here are my little slides trying to show you, but can't because they're completely transparent. So here's my specimen that I'm gonna try to look for a tardigrade on, but again, too high a mag magnification. It took absolutely forever, so I had to go back to my observation microscope. But here's me showing you how this will work. Like right to the side, right there on the specimen. Here's my black piece of paper again. We're gonna try this on the observation microscope. And I'm telling you, this was the key to success. <laughs> oh, this was the big difference. This was amazing. So get your specimen on there and get it in focus. Ooh, look, I already found something. Go ahead and grab your light and just start rolling it across your specimen bowl, looking for anything that glows really bright. Once you clear an area, go ahead and rotate your bowl and patrol a second area. Once we started this dark field view, it didn't take very long. 
We found a tardigrade! Oh, best day of my life. There he was, so cute and really glows in that light. That was really the big difference. So I'm gonna show you a comparison. Here is gonna be a clip without the side light. Here's no side light. There's the tardigrade, you cannot see it at all. And then when you shine the light over it, Boom, there he is. I'm pretty sure I found a bunch of tardigrades over the last few weeks and just didn't know it because I couldn't see them at all. They were completely transparent. So here I'm finally getting him under my compound microscope now that I actually have a tardigrade and there he is. Oh my goodness, they are so cute. They're even cuter in person. We absolutely had a total blast with this project and I highly recommend you go on a hunt for those tardigrades. They're seriously adorable and their claws are easily distinguishable through our microscope and you can see their cute little snout and they just seemed really, really fun. So we found lots of other creatures while we were patrolling and looking for tardigrades tardigrades. Here's a rotifer. We found a bunch of these guys. They're a lot like worms, but they have these freaky crazy things on the head that just, they act like table saws. They're pretty freaky. And then we found nematodes that are tardigrade food. We found lots of those. Now, if you want to learn how to preserve a tardigrade on a slide for your microscope, so you always have one, then I'm going to show you how to do that. So you're going to want to get your little water dropper that has your tardigrade in it and go ahead and put it on your slide. And most likely your tardigrade is already on your slide because you were looking at it under the microscope. You're going to want to get some 100% acetone and squirt it up with a different uh, eyedropper that you're not going to use on future tardigrades and squirt up some acetone and you're going to want to put a little bit on your tardigrade that has some water in it. So your tardigrade has water and it's going to mix with the acetone which will euthanize your tardigrade and then it can slowly dry out. You're going to want the acetone to dry out and once it's mostly dry, Go ahead and take some clear nail polish and put a droplet on top of them. Once you have your droplet down, go ahead and pick up your slide cover and slowly lay it down over top. There we go, it looks beautiful. And your tardigrade will forever be preserved. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. And don't forget to subscribe to the Little Black Shade Tree. We have some more footage of our beloved tardigrade here. So enjoy, and I'll see you in the next video.